grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to, to you, you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery, free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by the leading of your Spirit, bring us to our promised land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for the readings? A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day by day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. What marvels the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. What marvels the Lord worked for us, indeed we were glad. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed we were glad. The heathens themselves said what marvels the Lord worked for them what marvels the Lord worked for us indeed we were glad what marvels the from our bondage as streams in dry land those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap what marvels the full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. What marvels the
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. They came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I have a very, very short and very simple sermon for you today. It's about Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, no, not Bartholomew, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. This is emphasized right in the script. It tells you, it says right there in the gospel, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. It's it's like saying uh, John's son, John's son, twice. Why is that emphasized? Well, Bartimaeus meant son of the unclean one. And I think Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was going by and he finally heard someone who could set him free from whatever it was that was holding him back, including his blindness. He called out and people wouldn't listen. He called out and they tried to shut him up. They called out and finally, in frustration, they said, well, fine. Jesus stopped and said, well, bring him to me. And Bartimaeus, Jesus that moment, you know, what do you want me to do for you? I want my sight back. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole, go. But notice, Bartimaeus follows Jesus on the way. Now, the, that's all there in the text, but I want to I wanna ask you this. Do you think for the rest of his life, Bartimaeus was the son of the unclean one? Do you think that maybe that day, He became the one who was healed, or maybe the one who could see. Maybe, just maybe, by this single action of Jesus, he had been set free of a prison that his people had put on him when they named him. I don't know anything about Timaeus. I don't know nothing. I know know absolutely nothing about Bartimaeus' father, but I know his name was a curse. Son of the unclean one. And because his name was, maybe he was born blind, and that's why he was called cursed. But in that moment, Jesus, when he sets him free, I think Jesus not only gives him his sight, but gives him a new name. And I don't know what names you may have been given by your friends in the past. Cruel ones, hateful ones, hurtful ones. But Jesus sets us free from those names too. Who are you? You are a child of God. You are blessed and set aside by God for ministry. You are saved for a purpose. And like Bartimaeus, don't let anything get in your way from getting to Jesus. Get loud if you have to. Call out, cry out to him. The more people try and shut you down and shut you up, call out that much more. And I guarantee you the Lord will show up. And in showing up, will give you your heart's desire. But you know what? I think that Bartimaeus, having lived most of his life blind, even though that was what he wanted, he wanted his sight back. I think if he had just gotten his name changed, he would have been happy. Son of the unclean one. But the nature of grace is this, that it not only touches the symptoms of the disease, it touches the disease itself. We have no idea why Bartimaeus was blind, but he's healed. And we have no idea why he was called the son of the unclean one, or what sins or terrors Timaeus had wreaked on his community. 
but I'll bet you dollars to donuts, though we call him Bartimaeus in this text, his friends and those who followed Jesus and walked with him from that moment on called him something else. The one who could see, the one who'd been blessed, maybe even the persistent one. Maybe Jesus needs to change your name for some people. I don't mean your baptismal name. I mean just the names people call you. Maybe you've been set aside as foolish or silly or the youngest or normally ignored and you need to be called the wise one, the thoughtful one, the caring one, the careful one, the loving one. Think about that. In Jesus, what's your name? What name have you received having been transformed from any kind of burden or curse that was laid on you simply because of circumstance and that you and something that has nothing to do with you. Christ can set you free from this too, because he set our friend Bartimaeus free. Amen. And I'll just wait until you can frame me up and there you go. That shot actually works. And then we'll cut into this. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. In Jesus, God gathers his scattered people and opens their eyes to see. As children of our Heavenly Father, trusting in his will and capacity to care for us all, let us pray. We pray for all pastoral care in the church, for the ministries of listening and counseling, the sharing of grief, the freeing from guilt. We pray for the grace to accompany others to Christ's healing love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the healing of the nations, for a recognition of our need of God, and a turning away from all that is evil. We pray for all in authority and worldly power, remembering especially Her Majesty the Queen, that they may be guided along all right paths. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for an increase in love for one another, that we may be better at recognizing needs and responding to them, that we may give more time to those we love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are blind or partially sighted, and those who are spiritually or emotionally blind. We pray for the opening of eyes to see God's way and faith to trust him through good and ill. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those whose eyes have shut to this world, that they may open to the brightness and joy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for drawing us to you and stretching out your arms to us in welcome. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to the table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You have guided your people in all times and ages. May we who offer you our praise today always be ready to follow where you lead. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Eucharistic Prayer 2 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, Gather into one all who share these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and
and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, our God, you have fed us with bread from heaven, as you fed the people of Israel. May we who have been inwardly nourished be ready to follow you all our days. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.